Okay, so again, here's the HTML UI. Now, with that target platform configuration, meaning connecting NetSapiens to Zima Seacast, it's much like registering a phone. We need to know where or what domain it's registering to. We have to create a user or client ID. So that way we can use the SIP subscribe to pull all the users over and then determine when agents are available. But then to connect the contact center, it's as simple, oh, wrong thing. It's as simple as registering a SIP handset. That's it. I want to register a new handset. It's just like registering any phone. This contact center is now up and running and it's connected. You can now start routing calls and then having those go into the queue. Now to date, they're gonna use that desktop configuration. This desktop configuration for the administration, meaning you license your users over here. And again, it pulls all of the users over from NetSapiens. You can hit this refresh users and groups to pull those users over. Then it's just simple as giving them a, giving them a checkbox if they're an agent or not. And then you're gonna build your skills, your IVRs, your queues. What options do you want? As mentioned, again, you can do custom queue announcement, custom announcements, as simple as dropping in a pin and playing those default announcements like estimated wait time, position in queue, queue callback, or a custom queue announcement. Hey, due to inclement weather, we're experiencing long wait times. Or due to the holiday, like today, we have limited staff. Our wait times may be longer than usual. And you can upload or use those custom queue announcements if you want to drop those in. Or maybe I want to play a message once the call's being transferred over to the agent. I can do that if I want. Or again, that custom queue music, I can determine how long does it ring each agent before moving on to the next one. Bear with me, I'm gonna log out of my chat because that could go all day. There we go. You can set those timeouts, overflow actions, if no agents are available or logged in. Again, those sub-menu options like queue callback or ring an extension on NetSapiens or ring an outside phone line. Again, it's just like a virtual phone registered to NetSapiens, so it can call any of those numbers. Again, you can determine your max calls allowed in queue or clear queue at the end of the day or your queue callback options. I personally like the reserve agent, so that way it calls them back when I have an agent available immediately connects them over. You can read things like the caller ID. So we get those details. I was helping with a customer the other day um, doing a demonstration. That's what they wanted. They wanted to be able to report on when their sales team called versus the rest of the office because they were just moving their customer service team to the cloud, to the contact center. Everyone else was just using their cell phones or their home lines for their phone calls. So they wanted to be able to know when internal office called which again is just cell phones or external customers. Well, we see that phone number so we can run reports on that. Now from there, that's not going to use this desktop tool. That's going to use the web tools for those reports. There are over 40 standard reports. They can run and view those calls in cradle to grave or they can create their own reports. They can view them in real time or the supervisor view. This is what supervisors are going to use. The agents themselves are going to use their agent login. Now here you can see agents can have their own view. What do you want them to see? They can see generic metrics like calls in queue, but then they can also see values that pertain just to them. That DND time, that's just my DND time. You'll notice that just reset when I went off do not disturb. So today I can see I've been do not disturb for 30 minutes already. After call work timer was 25 seconds on that one call I was presented, one answered. If I go into a break mode or busy, Again, I get my reason codes. This is a customizable list. So each agent can have their own do not disturb reason codes. But again, supervisors can see that. If I go back over here to the supervisor view, they can see those agents. They can see what agents are logged in, who's logged out, who's on do not disturb, and if they set that reason code. And they can control that. Oh, I want to disable that. Okay. Oh, here, they just turned that off. Well, now I'm going to log out of my skill groups. Let's go ahead and log out of my skill groups. Well, again, I can see that over the supervisor view. No skill group logins. Let's go ahead and log those skill groups in. Now I'm in a ready state. And as you can see, each agent can have different values if you want. Here we've added a couple over to this agent, showing when they're enabled to their chat and voice channel. So the agents can also toggle back and forth between chats and phone calls if you wanted. 
Okay, so now I'm logged in, but let's go into a busy state. Let me go ahead and place a call in the queue so you can kind of see all of this in action. Okay, so there, put a call in the queue, right there. Okay, and I can see that as an agent, and then I can get an alert and trigger, like saying, hey, there's too many calls in queue. Okay, that could be an estimated wait time, uh, alert, what is it you want to send to the agent as well as the customers hearing their messages, such as Q callback. Okay, but I'll go ahead and make myself available so I can get that call. So I saw that call waiting there. It's now presenting over to me. Now it's showing me the details, but I'm going to use my Snap Mobile app to answer that call. Okay, now I'm on that call. And I can, while on the phone, see the customer details. I can add notes to that call or I can add account codes, but I can also do that after the call ends and I'm in my after call work timer. So I can come over here and add my account codes. Sometimes these are referred to as call activity codes, subject matter codes, call disposition codes. I can go back to my wall board. I can make myself available. So again, my ACW time remains smaller. If I put myself into a busy state again, this time I'm going to say break, put another call in the queue here. Here it comes again. So now I have that call in queue. It's telling me my estimated wait time. I have an alert trigger to uh, fire off after seven seconds in queue, just so you can see that there. Now the supervisor, again, I could log an agent in. I can make them available from here, or I could view those calls in queue right here, and I could transfer that call over to an available agent. They don't have to be logged in. I could just transfer it, and it's just sending it to their phone. Now, what I'm going to do is schedule a queue callback. So there it read back the caller ID. So I can use that phone number or enter a new number. That number was correct, so it just scheduled my queue callback. And it just disconnected me. So I don't have to sit there online. And I could, it said my estimated wait time is about one minute, but it all depends on the agent. It could be five minutes, 10 minutes. It's just when the agents become available. If an agent does become available, because I can see that pending queue callback here, make myself available. And I'm now reserved. Okay. And here it comes calling the customer back on my cell phone. Call back in one minute. Press two. Okay, I'm I'm ready to speak with an agent, and so now it's going to bridge the two together. Here it comes. And I go ahead and answer that as an agent. So it's still sent. It still sent me the customer details, the phone number here, so I can see those details, or I can hang up. So it's just treated like any other call. Okay, the same thing happens with web chats. Now, web chats are going to be hosted on the customer's website. And based off their URL, you can have it display different messages. We'll go ahead and refresh that. And there it can now see, oh, an agent is available. Click here to chat with an agent. We'll go ahead and click there. We'll go ahead and do demo Bob. Bob at email.com. I just have a simple blog spot here to show this. But I'll show you how real-time customers can change this. Put me into queue, and so it chimed in my headset over here. There's Demo Bob coming in on skill one. So again, based off the URL, you can have it go to different skill groups, which have different options, such as auto responses. I didn't have to type that out, but that was what was presented to the customer. There they can see my agent image, my logo, company logo. If I want to show that, I'll say hello. That's going to go ahead and chime on back over here. Say hello. Um, how can I help you? Or maybe I don't want to type that out and I want to select from a canned response. Okay, if I'm not the right agent, I can also request a screenshot or excuse me, request a screenshot or transfer that over to a different agent or skill. Now, if you do transfer it to an agent or skill, all of the previous chat text that was chatted in this session will be sent. So there I can see if I got this chat from Cabron, I can see, oh, okay, they introduced themselves. 
send them the support site, but I still don't really know what demo Bob needs. So maybe I wanna say, how can I help you? And again, agents can handle both chats and phone calls if you all want to allow them to do that. I am ready for a phone call here. So we'll go ahead and place a call in the queue. It immediately comes through. And now we're connected and that's why we have the active media sessions. And the space here is used for that ACW time or you uh, call back reserve or additional web chats. You can determine how many chat sessions each agent can handle. Maybe they're really skilled and so they can handle five chats at the same time. Okay, now just to show how real time you can make changes because I've seen that. I was helping a partner with an RFP about two weeks ago, and that was one of the requirements. We need to be able to make changes to our contact center in real time. Well, if I want to change the chat settings in real time, I could do that. I can change the look and feel of the chat if I wanted to. I can change what's displayed. We'll go ahead and put a I don't know, like purple on there for the header color. I could change everything else. I could add additional routes, URL route mappings to different skill groups if I wanted to. And again, in those skill groups is where you're going to have options like what is said? What do you want to do? What canned responses do you want? So maybe I don't want to say click here to chat with an agent. I wanted to say something like let's chat. Okay, I want to add a canned response. I want to change what is said while agents or the customer is typing. I can change that. Same thing goes with the skills. I want to add skill announcements, queue announcements, so I'll just drop in a pin. What do I want to tell them? Their position queue at this point. Okay, or, oh, I want to add an overflow timer, a timeout of, you know, after one hour, let's route that over to a voicemail group. We'll put that extension in there. Save. Those changes are live. That is done. I will now hear those announcements. I will now see those changes on the website. There you can see colors change, says let's chat. I wanted to send a chat over, I could do that. So very easy to administer and change what is displayed to the agents as well as the supervisors. Now, back to the supervisor view, that's a little bit of a high level overview of the agent view. The supervisor can have their supervisor view, again, where you can see some general statistics about your cues or your agents, but you can also build wall boards. Customizable wall boards to display virtually any value you want about your contact center. Because again, you can select from templates, but you can also customize this. Maybe I don't want calls in queue right now. I wanted that to display how many calls have been in queue for the day. Okay, so I can edit this template wall board. Okay, again, that's showing me my queued calls right now. Maybe I want to change that. Let's go ahead and edit the wall board. Okay, what is it you want to see? Well, I want, no, I don't want current calls in queue. Maybe I want to add something like my SLA of a speed of answer. Okay, but you can add this additional filter criteria. There are over 70 values in real time and all of these can have additional filters applied to them. So back to that customer that wanted to see when agents called versus their customers. Their sales agents versus their customers. So maybe we want to do things like, you know, call includes caller ID. Okay, well, I want to add the different caller IDs for my sales team. Or, you know what, I want to see where my speed of answer, how many calls I answered within my service level agreement of 30 seconds. Because right now, my average speed of answer is 39 seconds. Actually, that might be the total. No, nope, that's the average duration. So that is above my SLA. So I could set that change colors, those alerts and triggers thresholds on there if I'm not meeting my specific values. There you can see you can do bar charts, pie charts, leaderboards, active calls, gauge widgets, text boxes, chat boxes. What is it you want to see? You can have, again, as many of these as you want. I won't save those. That's fine. As you need. You can also run that on historical reports. Again, there are over 40 standard reports showing you the contact center. So calls lost in the contact center, where did they get lost in that IVR or in particular skills? How long before they hung up? Which agents are answering calls and chats? You can do that. And if I wanted to run this for a new day and time, maybe today, I'll just select last week through today. Which agents I can select, 
I can add additional criteria such as charts, shifts, time of day. We'll just go ahead and run it, adding that additional day in there if you want to see that. Okay, and there's my report. If I wanted to adjust this report, I can do that. So again, no two customers are the same. So maybe, well, I really like that report, but I, I really wish it had something like their speed of answer on here. It doesn't really say how long it took each agent to answer this. And maybe I want to put in their ACW time into this report. Well, you can do one of two things. You can edit the report by selecting the menu option. Duplicate, edit a schedule, or create your own from scratch. Create report. Well, I want an agent report. Well, I want to see things like, you know, how many calls they answered. Answered call count. Add the column, and it's going to add it right to the report. So it's going to build it right in front of you, and you can select from all the different predefined values. Answered call count. Well, now I want, you know, chat count. Let's put in how many chats they've added or answered. Okay, so again, it just builds it right in front of it, right, right in front of you. So you can see the layout of what the report looks like. But again, maybe you don't like these predefined values, the standard values. You can customize every single one of those standard values. Oh, chat count? Okay, well, what's the criteria of the chat? There's all the different filters based off of chat. Or you know what? I want now call count. There's even more filter options when it comes to the call count. So you can really, again, drill this down to get and measure what matters to the customer. And then if they want the ultimate view, that's where that cradle to grave comes in, showing you exactly what happened. I'll select a few days here because this is a, a little lab showing you exactly what happened on those calls. Which IVR did they go to? What menu did they select? Which queue did they get to? Which agent answered or missed the calls? Did they schedule a queue callback? Well, how long did they wait until scheduling the queue callback? Not very long. Well, what happens when we called this customer back? Here, I can see that right here. Oh, it attempted. They played the prompt. Oh, and they accepted the queue callback, and then they got presented over to the agent right away. Talk for just six seconds. You have the same details on web chat. How long did they wait on the website? How long did it take for an agent to answer the chat? What did they chat about? Did they transfer it? Did they request a screenshot? Did they select any of my canned responses? You're going to see all of those details in Cradle to Grave as well, as well as those account codes if they're using those for the calls or web chats. You can see any notes if they put in there or those tags, which again uh, are those incoming call route options inside of NetSapiens.